breathing down your neck, look, looking at your cock eye. Yeah, right. Thank you for hanging around for the second half hour. The Factor on Uncensored. We have much more coming your way, so don't go anywhere now. Unfortunately, this is a shared experience among many black people out there. That feeling of extra eyes on you when walking into a store and an employee could be watching or even following you, waiting on you to steal in their minds when that's not what the customer's intention at all is. <laughs> now, the general manager of an NBA team is one of the latest victims of this kind of racial profiling, which is also simply known as shopping while black, and it happened at the Saks Fifth Avenue in Miami. Shopping and joining me now here on The Factor Uncensored, we have with us Greg Dupree with TLAC Now, a security expert. So, Greg, Saks Fifth Avenue has apologized to Wizards General Manager Will Dawkins for... <laughs> Are they sure they weren't looking at the six guys running out of the store behind him with stuff? I mean, he may, he may have just been in the crossfire of the the white gaze. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to see. I, I want to see what um. What really, this is kind of like a, a talk show right here. I want to see what really happened, man. Um. <laughs> Maybe someone recognized him and wanted his autograph or something. He's not used to that. Let's just say, oh God, Jesus Christ! The, the main, uh, the, the the brothers is on it. They covering it. Um, brothers is covering this story, man. Over the weekend, uh, I texted Mark Spears after reading an incredible story in Anscape, and incredible, not because- Oh shit, this happened in 2023. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it would have been a lot more impactful in 2023. It feels a little late for this kind of, must be slow. If we can find a real news story with what really happened, man. Brother, what happened to you, man? Um, yeah, oh no, man. Anyway, let's just see this. One. Let's see this. One. Over the weekend, uh, I texted Mark Spears after reading an incredible story in Anscape, and incredible not because uh, the circumstances made you feel great about society incredible because the story uh was being told in a compelling way as most mark spears stories are and the aftermath of turning a, a negative event into a positive one washington wizards general manager will dawkins uh racially profiled by a sax fifth avenue security guard who was assisted by the Miami Police Department. And Will Dawkins uh, told his story to Mark Spears. I told you a Hall of Famer was joining us. Here's Hall of Famer, Hall of Fame basketball writer, Hall of Fame basketball contributor, Mark Spears. And Mark, I'm gonna tell you this, man. I, I've had you, I've invited you to my classes at BU before. It didn't work out. We had a technical difficulty that day, but- Got all three shades The reason here. I invited you that day is your reporting experience and your ability to interview one of the best interviewers in America because you get people to tell you listen and you get people to tell their stories in ways that a lot of people can't get them to relax and open up. And I think this is a prime example Thank of you. it. Uh, this Will Dawkins story, man, it, it just really hit me in so many ways, <laughs> especially when you quoted will saying his mother told him this story didn't happen to you it happened for you <laughs> so for you to tell your story what what did you what did you think when you first heard about this and and was there any is it the guy on the right who got profiled by dawkins to be as open with you as he was nah these are just um people talking about it well the when, I, when I first heard it i i think it's just a reminder to Yo, we're two minutes in. You still haven't told us what the fuck happened, man. He looks Come on, man. 
Wish I had a picture of the guy. Yeah, he looked like a goddamn Ethiopian or Somalian, man. Will Dawkins, you sure that's his real name? Uh, but it, it, it's it's got to be disheartening because, you know, any time he walked. Yo, what the, the he, fuck happened? Well, that store didn't do nothing to change anything. The city did, you know, made some uh, changes. So I think that's what he was thinking to in the midst of a bunch of um, pain. I asked him, did you stop going to malls? Did you stop going to stores? He's like, oh my God, man. These things are the softest baby shit. Let me, um, let me, let me, let me see if we can find the story, man. What, what happened, man, to this poor guy, man. Um, well, he felt eyes on him while he was trying to shop. That must have been devastating. <laughs> Maybe they don't have a lot of sun people come into those stores. Maybe he was like an oddity, like they'd never seen one before. The security guard, probably a, probably a son, 50-50 chance, maybe. Washington Wizards general manager Will Dawkins received a phone. Hold on, let me let me put him on the on the summer jam screen, man. Um all right, there he is. Yeah. There his uh funny looking ass. <laughs> Say that. Um, Washington Wizards general manager Will Dawkins received a formal apology from luxury clothing store Saks Fifth Avenue on Thursday after he was subject of a racial profiling incident. So, like, is the security guard say, hey, yeah, I only fucked with him because he's black? Like, how does that work? How do we determine whether it was racial profiling? And and what exactly was he subjected to? Was he questioned? Was he was his pockets turned out? What what do we it sounds like nothing. By one of his security guards on my in, in Miami on November second, twenty twenty three, Dawkins said he was followed and grabbed by an unidentified plainclothes Brookell security guard and a Miami police officer and taken back to the store. The security guard and the police officer said he stole clothing and concealed them after leaving the Saks store at the Brookell City Center. It was later determined that night from video surveillance that the first year Wizards general manager was mistaken for a man who was recorded stealing. So that, that's not that's not racial profiling. That was a mistaken identity. The whole story sounds kind of suspect. They were stealing and the items they were stealing, they tried to conceal. I mean, they didn't just walk right out the door with it. That's that's kind of weird. This is crazy, man. So some other guy was stealing and the police came and they grabbed him like outside of the store because they thought it was him. It that could be a miscommunication, you know what I'm saying? It could have been just like, yo, it's a black dude with big ears and big bug eyes. And they just was like, yo, there you go right there. Yeah, you know, but like, <laughs> But you know, sons ain't gonna let that slide. It's definitely a mistaken identity, and I don't want to hear that because he got money. Because remember that 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 basketball player that stole in Target. So, you know, it is what it is. I want to know how they made it up to him. What what did they they give him some free clothes or something? It says. Um, It says it was later determined that night from video surveillance that the first year was his general manager was mistaken for a man who was recorded stealing clothing. Dawkins was released by the store security the same night. The Wizards were in town to play the Miami Heat. Larry Bruce, president of Saks Fifth Avenue, sent a letter to Dawkins that was posted Thursday on LinkedIn that included an official apology from himself and the company. So the the president of Saks Fifth Avenue issued an apology. And this nigga still took it public. <laughs> yeah, it's I wonder, if that's, I wonder if that security guard is going to lose his job or lost his job. Oh, yeah. That whole secu- In cases like this, it's not uncommon for them to just cut ties with the whole security company. Yeah, they will. 
privileged. We're privileged, man. We 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 snowflakes, man. Um uh it says uh so the the, the president sent him a letter um taking full responsibility for an incident that should have never happened. <laughs> The, the, the president of Saks Fifth Avenue added that the security guard in question is no longer with the company. Broke protocol by approaching Dawkins without identifying himself. Falsely accused Dawkins of shoplifting and with the assistance of Miami PD wrongfully detained Bruce Dawkins. Um, um, longer than famous Will Dawkins. He's probably been waiting his whole life to have an incident like this. All of the security personnel at six at Saks Brickle store were retrained November 10th, 2023, and will be retrained if they don't adhere to security policies and procedures. Saks Fifth Avenue is also donated to three charities in Dawkins' name. And this nigga still went public with it a year later. It Yo, fulfilled a, a dream for him to be, you know, victimized. Exactly, exactly, exactly. You could tell he's not used to being victimized. This ain't something that happens all the time that he can just, you know, brush out of. It, this is new money, man. So he, the, the president sent him a letter. They fired the, the, the security guard. They retrained all of their other security guards. They donated the three charities in his honor. And this nigga still went public with it a year later and blasted the company. You got everybody talking about Saks Fifth Avenue. Because right? the way black people talk, this is what gliders don't understand. In black circles, Saks Fifth Avenue is racist. It's like they're like a, a thing. That Saks Fifth Avenue is not like a corporation with tons of stores and tons of employees. It's one, like, it's like an animate object. Saks Fifth Avenue is racist. It's like a plantation. No, it's like a, it's just like a person. Like a plantation owner. Like a yeah, it's just it's just Sax Sax Fifth Avenue racist, y'all. Then then we start talking, man. You want to man, Sax racist, man. You yeah, Sax racist, man. Sax Fifth Avenue racist, man. Just just that's just crazy, man. Um so uh is that Sax Fifth Avenue donated to three charities in Dawkins' name, the Greater Washington Urban League, Roca in Springfield, Massachusetts. The Miami Coalition to Advance Racial Equity. <laughs> Dawkins described the donations as sizable. Oh shit! So they donated thousands of dollars. Let's just say they donated fifty thousand each one, right? Oh, let's just say twenty. Let's be. Let's be. All right. God damn, son, man! Like what the fuck. We still man? have a long way to go. We'll always have a long way to go. Drop in the bucket. Wow. Um, so uh, let's see. There was a violation of our policies that never should have happened. It is an important reminder to our entire organization that we must continually work to ensure that every guest that comes through our doors is welcomed and treated with respect. Bruce wrote on LinkedIn. That's the um, president of Saks. As part of this, we are pleased to be making donations to three worthy organizations that are dedicated to making a positive impact on causes that are important to Mr. Dawkins. Dawkins believed it was necessary to address the racial profiling incident at Saks Fifth Avenue as a push to readjust their policy and personnel for the better, in hopes of making a greater racial and social impact. 
nigga, all that you. happened was some nigga was stealing. They called the police. The goddamn security guard and the police went to look for the guy. They grabbed you by accident, took you in the back, and then let your ass go. When they realized it wasn't you. That's all the fuck that happened. All Shameful. this social impact is bullshit, man. Cause these are the type of motherfuckers that they won't they 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 won't he, he from Washington DC, so he's the GM in Washington DC. Washington DC is a war zone right now. I mean a war zone. Shots, black bodies dropping all the time. He won't say shit about that, but he'll bitch about being um, fucking detained for fucking five minutes by accident and shit. And talk about all these social issues, man. Fuck that shit. I don't feel sorry for you, nigga. Um, you a goddamn, um, you a goddamn race baiter, man. You ain't no fuck that. They kissed your ass from here to around the corner. You still went public with that shit and embarrassed their company. The way Saks Fifth Avenue handled that shit was above and beyond re reproach. Never enough. They went up. Yeah, they went above and beyond. And you still fucking out of them, man. Didn't Saks Fifth uh, Avenue used to import slaves or something? They must have. Something. Yeah, something like Probably that. Probably were able to buy them at Saks Fifth Avenue in the 19th century. You could buy slaves there. So there's a lot to retro restitution that's in line. Yeah, yeah. The Springfield, Massachusetts native agreed. Oh, so he's from. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So you already know Boston. Yeah. Nah, he probably a uh, um, Cape Verdean or some shit. That's why he looked like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, because I got family in, um, in Boston, Springfield, and everything. Yeah, it's already. They're already on that. They thinking Boston is racist. Yeah, yeah. Um, says um, he agreed to speak to Anscape in hopes that his story will help others without a voice who have faced racial profiling and perhaps prevent such incidents by changing how stores nationwide treat their customers. So he, they try to make it harder for fucking stores. It's already hard enough to get catch thieves and shit now, man. They try to make it harder. Like, they try to make it to where, like, if a, if a black dude ain't, like, like, yo, they, they, they literally trying to make it to where, like, if a black dude doesn't just, like, come in your store with a bullhorn and announce, I'm stealing, I'm stealing, and like walk <laughs> out. Like, I mean, like, what the fuck? <sighs> the advice that I got throughout this process, which was a lot of helpful stuff, was that my mother kept telling me this was an incident that happened for me and not to me. Dawkins said to Anscape in a phone interview. So I understand that not everyone wants to hear this story and not everyone will believe this story. <laughs> I think there'll be people who will ask why I'm even talking about it and be upset with me sharing my experience. <clears throat> I get that. And it's not for everyone. But even if one person comes across this and it gives them strength to speak up, then it was all worth it. So he my did hope is that others. <laughs> Sorry. My hope, my hope is that other stores see this and elect to readjust their policy or personnel. And in turn, those changes prevent at least one future event like this from happening to someone else. <laughs> The, what a fucking dumbass thing to say. You know how many light, fucking stores there are in the fucking country? You know how many fucking people are stealing nowadays? Are you watching the news, all the smashing grabs? 
Yo, all the stealing that's going on since 2020, all the brazen wonton stealing. You want every you want the whole to change the whole system because you got accidentally misidentified as somebody and instantly released. You didn't get arrested. You didn't spend fucking a month in jail while you were fighting it. They took you to the back. And fucking was like, oh, he's the wrong dude. My bad. And then gave you fucking kissed your ass from here to around the corner. Act like you some fucking victim, man. You ain't no fucking victim, dude. Listen. That's the best thing you can be now as a victim. It, it's almost like being sacred. It's embarrassing. Yeah, this is this is this is very. Now he can go steal. Now he I'm can just walk into you. a place and steal. Facts. He says, I like I the idea that there's sons out there that don't have a voice that he's doing this for, though. I like, know. Because you don't hear you don't hear the son perspective anywhere in the media. Right. Sons that we just we just we we just silenced, man. Um America's got the muzzle on us as a collective, man. <laughs> he says, and it's not for everyone, but even if one person comes across and this gives them strength to speak up, then it was all worth it. I That's another that. It's sad. it's sad. He put all his energy in this, but let it let it be a random child get shot by a straight bullet by some thug. He will yeah, never put all the strength in this shit. He would never ask. Yeah, he would never. He would never. He would never even give a fuck. He'd never give a. He wouldn't give. He wouldn't. He. It happens. What do you mean? What if that shit happens all the time in DC? He said, My hope is that other stores. See this, and and you and, and when you coming in, Mark, man, your 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 um fucking um whatever that noise is in the background, that shit is fucking my ears up, Jack. I don't know what that is, man. You standing next to the speaker or whatever, you know that shit is like um I don't know whether it's a fucking with if it's um if it's um like with your microphone or something, but that shit sound like goddamn um. What does that sound? What does that sound to sound like? Train station. Like, oh, yeah, a train coming to a stop. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Not like a fucking Amtrak train coming to a stop. Is this better? <laughs> um. I don't know, man. Um, yeah, but the show's almost over, so don't worry about it, man. Um, he says, um, my hope is that other stores, okay, he says, my hope, <laughs> my hope is that other stores see this and elect to readjust their policy or personnel. And in turn, those changes prevent at least one future event like this from happening to someone else. Once I was able to reshape my thinking, I realized it was all worth it because this didn't happen to me. It happened for me. Dawkins gave an exclusive interview to Anscape on Thursday after the apology was released, offering details about the racial profiling incident how his parents inspired him to speak out, how it has affected him mentally, why he told Wizards players and more. We had just flown into Miami and were going to play the Heat the next night. I was informed that I had a chance to speak to some season ticket members. When I was told it was outdoors by the hotel pool instead of indoors. I decided to go purchase a short sleeve shirt. I walked over to Brick L City Center, which is near our hotel. It was probably around 8 p.m. that night. I stopped in a couple of stores, purchased a shirt at Zara. I walked out with a tiny white bag. Stores were about to close. On my way out, I saw Saks Fifth Avenue. 
decided to pop my head in there just to see if they had other options. I entered on the third floor, browsed at some shoes that were right there. And when I walked through the door, took the escalator down to the second floor, looked at the shirt section for probably two minutes, realized it wasn't my style, and within four minutes exited the store. Once I'm back walking the outdoor mall area, I get two stores down and I'm looking at the Apple store to my right, thinking about buying my wife a new AirPod, new AirPods that were recently misplaced. Out of the corner of my eye, I see someone run up on me. They were in plain clothes, jeans, and a collared shirt like a normal civilian. He never addressed himself and never showed a badge or anything like that. He tried to grab my arm and hold me down instinctively. I pushed him away, put my back against the glass, checked my pockets to see where my phones were in case they were trying to steal from me. Then I put my hands up, ready to defend myself or mentally prepared to run if they pulled something out. But before the tussle escalated, I saw a police officer come out of my right side. I'm thinking the cop is coming to stop the dude from stealing from me. Instead, the officer grabs me, holds me, and tells me to stop resisting. <laughs> hey man it that's sucks I'm not problem. saying that. yeah that's I mean that, that sucks it, it sucks it, it, that's that's not a happy thing don't get me wrong make sure you support the channel via PayPal cash up with the super chat um, it sucks don't get me wrong that sucks yeah I mean fucked up um so when this first happened, you think you're just getting robbed or assaulted. Yeah, I think I'm being robbed because a plain clothes person comes at me, tries to grab my hands, which has my bag in it. I'm thinking, what's he trying to steal? Did he get anything? And then focus on defending myself. Once the police officer arrived, they both loudly accused me of stealing from the store. And I realized it was a different type of circumstance that I would have to deal with. Despite my protest and explanation that I didn't take anything and that I would never steal from them. They said, we got you. You were, you were here earlier today. You tried to come back again. You're not going to get us this time. At that point, they started walking me back into the store. The cop held my arm the entire time. I explained to him that he as the wrong person, that I'm the general manager of the Washington Wizards. There's no way I was here previously stealing from them and asked from them, asked for them to let me call our vice president of security, Brian Thompson. While still holding me, I provided my NBA ID. And then at that point, the police officer let me call Brian. I called Brian and said, hey, there's a situation going on at Saks. It looks like they're holding me taking me to the back he was at our team dinner at the time which i was initially on my way to after shopping he instantly said i'm on it i'll be there be smart and just be safe after that i entered their back office and there was another young gentleman who was surveying the tapes they confiscated my bag my wallet both cell phones and just started searching through all my stuff. The whole thing probably lasted 20 minutes. At a certain point, another officer entered to see how everything was going. I again expressed my displeasure and explained that it's not all good. That they can't treat everyone like this. <laughs> he said they can't treat everyone like this. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I why would you say they can't treat everyone like this when they're, they're not treating everyone like that? But anyway, um, you can't falsely accuse me. And we all don't look alike. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, facts, man. You're you a, you a strange looking uh, fellow. Um, not everybody looks like they were kicked by a horse. <laughs> yeah. The policeman researched me online and quickly exited the room. I don't blame the Miami PD. 
they were told by the sax employee to come assist with this. Black cops. Okay, I'll give him credit for that. I'll give him credit for that. At least he's not blaming the Miami police PD. They were probably black cops that showed up. So he, yeah. you think he's blind, you think he's blaming the uh the security or he just Oh, he's definitely blaming the security, but he's not blaming the the the, the, the police officer that assisted. So that I, you got to give you got to look, man. You got to give sons credit for it. I'm just um, glad that he complied and didn't, you know, try to resist. Yeah, exactly. This would be a completely glad. different story. Yeah. My thing is, he complied. Why didn't he just comply? Let bygones be bygones and let it let it go. There's no cloud in that. He, yeah, because. Listen, man, look at this shit. I mean, he's like a hero now. Like, yo, he's a hero. He's a black history hero. He can feel he good about going back to his nice house. He can feel good. He feels like he's kind of had to struggle like other blacks have had to struggle. So now he can feel like he's part of it and he doesn't have to feel any kind yeah. of guilt. Or, you know, he's lived, I'm right. sure he lives in a white neighborhood. He needs this oh, to sort of validate himself. Without a doubt, lives in a white neighborhood. If he's the GM from, he don't live in Southeast, I can tell you that much. Um, Hell no. It says, um, the policeman researched me online and quickly exited the room. I don't blame the Miami PD. They were told by a sax employee to come assist with this. They saw the altercation was about to get worse. They broke it up, took the employee's word for it, and it is what it is. Even after the police exited, I continued to be accused by sax personnel that I had been stealing. At this point, I got pretty defensive and said, please find the tape and show me. I'd say approximately 10 minutes later, they realized that they have nothing. And they asked me to sign this paper and told me I am free to leave. To which I refused and elected to stay around until my team security arrived. After Brian arrived and fully investigated the situation, the SACS employees admitted that they had made a mistake and connected us with their regional manager who apologized and said, it will be handled internally. That Brian person and I too. <laughs> Brian and I departed for the team dinner. 30 minutes into the meal, we received a phone call from the higher ups at 6th Avenue. So, so they, 30 minutes later, they had called apologize. Damn. Not enough. <laughs> Wanting to speak with me directly too about late. the incident. Saying that they quickly reviewed it and that they were completely in the wrong, which I really respected. Oh, he respected it though. From then on, I took some time to myself, talked to my family, talked to Brian, talked to the Wizards president, Mike Winger, talked to the CEO of Monumental Sports and Entertainment, Ted Leontis, because the next morning it just really didn't sit right with me. So I made sure that I thoroughly thought through what I wanted to do before reaching back out to them and coming up with some ideas on how we can make a negative situation have more of a positive outcome. It was then that he decided a year later he would tell the story to the public. (laughs) Yo, this is crazy. This is evil, yo. (laughs) But I understand where you're coming from, but he he didn't have to take it this far. You know what? I'm sure what happened was all the sort of... uh, attention he got from his friends and people he told the story to is kind of worn off a little bit. It's an old story now, so he has to kind of put it back out there to sort of reassert his victimhood. Yeah. Yeah, no, I listen, I will say this. It's fucked up, man. Like, if, if I was him and I'm just walking through the mall and some fucking plain clothes guy come up, grab me and then the cop come up and they start accusing me of shit, like you've had a bad day. Like that's that's a fucked up moment. Like it's embarrassing a little bit to the people in the um, mall watching you go through this. You're you're confused. Don't get me wrong. It's fucked up, but they instantly made it right. Like they didn't like get back to him a month later. They didn't. You know what I'm saying? They instantly made everything right. And over time, you know, I'm sure that night they didn't donate to those charities. That was like, okay, the next week we got this other idea. We're gonna we're gonna donate to these charities in your name, and we're gonna, 